And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Quartex is a new abstract game from CSE Games. Uh, you might have known them from their hockey and football games that they put out a, a long time ago, their hockey game. Uh, my One of my co-hosts, Sam Healy, was especially a fan of. Cortex is not a sports game. Rather, it's a tile-laying game. I have a bag of the tiles here. That you, These tiles have different shapes, and you'll be placing these on the board to score points. Well, let me show you in more detail. game everyone gets five tiles which they hide behind a shield here these five tiles are made up of purple yellow red and blue in their corners when you put them together for example if you put four purples together in a corner it forms a cross four yellows forms a circle four reds a square four blues a star and each of these tiles is reversible so you see here's purple blue red red I can flip that and now it's blue purple red red uh, and I believe there's only one tile of every combination in the bag. Uh, so, for example, here's one with three purples and a blue. I believe that's the only three purples and a blue. One person goes first and they place their tile in the middle of the table. Uh, the next player has to take their tile and match it. Now it has to match both here, so for example, purple with purple, purple with purple, and if someone else did one here that was purple and yellow, the next person would have to play one that was a blue, a purple, and a yellow. If someone then plays the matching tile, they have just formed a purple cross, and at that point, they will score. They will score by taking from one of the stacks that's near the game that has all these tokens. So they'll take one of the purple tokens, and then the game will continue. If for some reason you can't play any of your tiles, there's no place to play them, then you have to show your tiles to everybody else and you will draw new ones and replace your old ones in the bag. You will keep going till the bag is empty, and then everyone plays as many tiles as they possibly can. At the end of the game, you're going to look at how many tiles you have. Let's say, for example, I have two reds, two yellows, two purples, and a blue. And tiles that nobody has taken are two reds, four blues, a purple, and three yellows. These are the tiles that nobody has taken. I have two yellows, they're each worth three points each, six. Two reds, two points each, four. One blue, four points, four. Two purples, one purple left, so they are worth two. So if for some reason you get a couple tiles of a kind that no one else has taken many of and there's a whole pile left, you can get a lot of points that way. Whoever has the most points is the winner. Cortex has some good things going for it. The scoring system I like very much because the more you take a, a, a tile and points to get those, the less they become worth. And so that's a very interesting scoring mechanism. I'm not sure I've seen it in the game before, uh, I've, but it, I wouldn't mind seeing that scoring mechanic in other games. It's also quick and uh, younger kids are going to probably enjoy Cortex. Unfortunately, those are the only two positive things I can say about this game. Because this game suffers from a humongous flaw, and I'm just shocked that people have kind of missed this. And that's the fact that when you put down a tile to, to get a token, you have to have the fourth tile. So if I'm making a yellow circle, here's one half, another half, and then someone pulls out a, a tile, who is going to put down the third one? Because why would I ever set you up to get a point? And you say, well, you set some up because you have to. Well, yes, and that's what happens in this game. There's really no playing of strategy. You're simply putting a tile out, and if possible, don't set anyone up. If you can't do that, then you set someone up grudgingly. And so the way you're going to win is to set someone else up. So here's what the game will look like. If you play with gamers at all, the game is going to look like one long row because no one is ever going to branch off that row because then it makes the third one. So I think this could be easily solved by making a bit of a grid for Cortex and saying you must stay within that grid. You do that and then there's walls and then things become more interesting. But other than that, it's kind of just an exercise in saying, oh, these are the tiles I have. Let's find the best possible position that doesn't help anybody else. Can I finish something? 
Hallelujah. Uh, there's really nothing more to the game than that. I wanted to say that it, this game is fun, but I did not find it so. Uh, the, the components are nice quality. The idea is neat, but it just felt like that one thing just ruined the game. And I got out the rules and I said, okay, maybe maybe there's a, a grid somewhere. No, there's no grid. Maybe there's some other, you know, that you, there, there's nothing. And it, it's, it's very frustrating because the game just falls apart at that point in time. Kids won't notice that as much, and I think they'll have a better time with it. And maybe very casual gamers will like this. Uh, but I'm just, I'm, I'm every person that I played it with has instantly figured that out. And the games have just become an exercise of when is it over? Cortex. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com. Shut the door! That's right. Shut it. Yeah. Yeah.